Hello and welcome to the American Museum of Tort Law and our continuing video series of interviews with thought leaders on interesting and timely topics. I'm your host, Rick Newman, Executive Director of the Museum, and it's a pleasure to have you here today. My pleasure to be here, Rick. January 6th, 2021 was the day of the insurrection resulting in violence and death in the nation's capital, left behind a mess with destruction and looting and enormous costs for cleanup. It was followed thereafter by heightened security precautions at the inauguration. Our guest today is Alan Morrison, the Lerner Family Associate Dean for Public Interest and Public Service Law at GW Law in Washington. On uh, January 31st, USA Today published an article that Professor Morrison had written titled, Biden administration should sue Donald Trump to pay for Capitol riot cleanup. So this could not be more timely. Welcome, Alan. Tell us about this article. Well, let me start actually with the beginning so everybody understands it. If somebody walked into your house, Rick, and knocked the door down and got in and destroyed all your furniture, you would think you probably had a claim against them, right? Yeah. And if the person brought two or three of the friends and they were all there, it wouldn't matter which, who actually broke the chair and who broke the piano and who smashed the glasses, everybody would be liable because it's all part of one enterprise, right? Yes. So that's the basic story here. The United States government owns the Capitol. It owns the doors, the windows, the chairs, the desks, everything that was smashed and broken into and it has to repair them. It has to spend the money now. And so my idea is very simple. I should sue the people responsible. All right, who's responsible? Well, obviously all the people who, who physically came in inside the uh, Capitol, they're responsible, uh, but there are other people who are responsible as well and they need to be sued. Uh, first, we know already that this wasn't a spontaneous event that it was carefully planned, that there were people who were raising money for it, that, that they paid for people to come to Washington, they got the places to stay, and they got the permits and rallied them around. All of those organizers are, in my view, uh, right in line with being uh, defendants. And uh, you know, whether they will be, be you know, what, what the proof will turn out to be at trial is of course a, a different matter as lawyers know all, all the time. The, the third group of people is the person who inspired all of this, Donald Trump. And you can focus on what he said on the 6th of January with this big mob in front of him. He said, we're all going up there, I'll be with you. Of course he didn't go, uh, which is not surprising. Um, and what were they going up there for? Were they going up there to wave some flags and banners outside? No. They were going up there to try to influence the members of Congress who were about to vote to accept or not accept what the state electors had presented to them. Uh, and he, it was perfectly clear from what Donald Trump said that he was encouraging to go up and he wasn't encouraging to go up and stand around outside the Capitol. That's how they were not gonna, gonna stop the steal as, as they put it. They had to actually go inside and try to influence the people, members of Congress, Senate, House, who were going to vote, and indeed attempt to influence the vice president, who had by this time said to the president, no more, we're not going to do any of this anymore. Well, and it was, in some cases, it was more than trying to influence. They were trying to intimidate and, oh, perhaps, absolutely. and perhaps execute members of Congress. Right. Exactly. I mean... Well, I don't know that we know that the president, that President Trump was in favor of executing members of Congress. But when you turn a mob loose like that, you've got to be expected for the natural and probable consequences of, of what happened. Right. So uh, he's going to defend on various grounds. Oh, and by the way, in addition, uh, Rudy Giuliani, who was with him standing right there, says uh, we're going to engage in trial by combat doesn't sound like exercising their First Amendment rights. And his son and various other members of the family get up there and we're engaged in the same kind of, of cheerleading. Now, 
the other thing about this, it, 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 there's both the before and after that needs to be taken into account as far as the president's concerned. Mm -hmm. The before is all that he was doing in the 75 days before then from the election day to tell the world that he thought the election was being stolen. Um, and uh, urging everybody to do everything in their power. So the notion that when he said, go on up to the Capitol, he was thinking that if somebody just gone up there and marching around the outside of the building um, doesn't hold true. And I think the finders of fact will, will make it to the country. Second, uh, imagine if he'd gotten everybody up there and said, you know, don't go up to the Capitol. I've They're going to make their mind. decisions. Yeah, yeah it just, just stay here, express your First Amendment rights. Would they have gone? No. He was their leader. He told them what to do. Uh, they understood. That they're, they're, they're clued in entirely uh, uh, as to what's going to happen. And the third aspect of this is um, and, you know, whether we'll be able to get the people who were present to testify. It's a different question. But everything we've heard is that the president was in there watching this all on television. Um, people were telling him, you've got to tell him, you've got to back off, tell him to stop, and you've got to provide more help. Did nothing except watching television. That, in my judgment, confirms that not only did he direct his people to go forward, but that's exactly what he wanted to do. And he was far from being unhappy. He was delighted with, with what happened. Okay. Yeah, and it's notable, I think, and, and you wrote this, this is a quote from the, uh, from your article in USA Today, quote, despite his promise to join the rioters at the Capitol, the then president was safely hiding out in the White House, but that will not relieve him of the legal liability for pulling the rhetorical trigger to start the invasion. I mean, that's true, isn't it? The fact I that he wasn't there doesn't exculpate him. Oh, absolutely not. So uh, there's a couple of things. I mean, people have written and said there are two possible defenses he's, he's going to raise. He's going to make a First Amendment argument. And we know that the First Amendment allows considerable freedom to express views. Uh, I think that the trier of fact will find that he wasn't expressing his views. He wasn't asking people to go forth and do peaceful demonstrations. He was asking them to do what, what they did. Uh, and I don't think the First Amendment protects incitement to riot. And that's a question of fact as to what he was actually doing. Um, uh, second, uh, some have suggested that as the president, he's entitled to uh, absolute immunity for many of his activities. No question that that's correct. Supreme Court has also made it clear that he's only entitled to the absolute immunity for actions within the outer perimeter of his duties. Uh, so if he had ordered the troops to come up there and there had been violence, of course, he wouldn't have been responsible for that. But sending people up to the Congress to undermine a valid election is not within the scope of the presidential authority. and and. If there are any boundaries at all, uh, this is surely uh, beyond them in terms of what the president can, can do. Uh, and so I, I urge this lawsuits to be brought against people who have money and against the president who the only language he understands is money. Uh, and uh, that th in a way, this is a more fitting uh, punishment, uh, retribution, uh, than impeachment. Uh, what does he care about being impeached? Uh, he may not like not being able to run for office again, but we'll see about that. But he does understand money. Uh, that's the language he speaks. And that's what this is about. Yeah, and that raises, I guess, my last question. The impeachment trial will be before the United States Senate. If the Biden administration sues Trump and the other ringleaders for this insurrection and the monetary damages they caused, where would that be tried? Senate or a regular jury? Well, it'd be tried in the District of Columbia, in the federal court, in the federal court in the District of Columbia. Uh, I have not researched the question of whether uh, either party has a right to trial by jury. 
<laughs> or whether the, the defendant, if he has a right to travel, the defendants, if they have a right to travel, a jury would would would, uh, would seek it, or rather have the mercies of a federal judge. Um, th now, uh, the article also mentions other cases besides the case of the United States that would certainly be brought with it. So, for example, all the members of Congress who were intimidated and suffer fear, uh, uh, and some who may have been physically injured. All of them would have claims. The attorney general could not represent them, but they could file their claims in the same court. And all the discovery that the attorney general did and all the, the, the work on liability would inure to their benefits. Uh, right. In addition, as you mentioned earlier, there are huge costs of additional security that the government incurred uh, to prevent this from happening again at the inauguration. Those costs are enormous. Some of them may have been borne by the United States government. Others may have been borne by state militias or the District of Columbia government. All those claims could all be brought as part of the same, same case. That They would have separate docket numbers and the individuals would be separately represented. The district would be separately represented. But they could all be brought together in one forum. The, only, the issues are all the same. And the only question is the amount of, of damages. So uh, this, this has a potential for, for bringing a lot of justice uh, to uh, people who were doing their jobs uh, from guards and uh, staff to members of Congress. Excellent. Well, it'll be interesting to see if this comes to pass. This is a, a much more straightforward and perhaps efficacious way to hold Trump accountable than the impeachment process that you just alluded to. And, and it's something that every American can understand. Yeah. Somebody marches into your house and breaks up your house. Do you think you ought to be able to go to court and sue them? Right. And, and if somebody eggs them on and says, I'm not going, but you can go instead and go ahead and break their house up. Do it for me. Yeah. yeah. And, and does anybody think that it would be legal if because you said, well, you know, these people are plotting to do some dangerous things. Uh, they're, they're plotting democracy or they're exercising their religious freedom and you disagree with them. Uh, surely we can't allow people to break into other people's homes or businesses just because they have philosophical or other disagreements with them. But that's right. essentially what was going on here. So uh, the fact that the president and his supporters may have thought that the election was stolen doesn't give them any right to break into the Congress. Right. All right. Well, this has been Professor Alan Morrison, and it will be very interesting to see if this is a prophetic article and if lawsuits do indeed follow. So thank you very much for talking. My pleasure, Rick. Nice to see you as always. Good. Stay well. Talk to you soon. Ciao. Bye. Bye.